Hi, this video is about the Caribou Mathematics Contest. I'm going to show the solution for the May 2016 Grade 9 10 Contest, Question 19, which also came up in the Grade 11 12 Contest. So the question is Charlotte is riding her bicycle when she comes to a portion of road that has many bumps on the ground, all equally spaced apart from one another at a distance of B. Each time Charlotte's front or back tire hits a bump, she is bound slightly into the air. The distance between the center of her front and back bicycle tires is D. Which relation between B and D describes all cases that Charlotte bounces rhythmically at equal time intervals when her bike hits the bumps either with the front or back tire or both at the same time? Okay, so we have two cases to investigate. Now the first case to investigate is when both tires are bouncing at the same time and that is shown here in a picture where both tires are at the top of a bump and the second case we want to investigate is when both tires are not bouncing at the same time and that is again shown in a picture here where the front tire is at the top of a bump but the back tire is not. Okay, so now let's look at that first case. Let's investigate the first case. Now we can see that the distance between the front and the back tires, D, is actually a multiple of B. And here in this picture shown, D is actually equal to 2B because here we have one distance of B and then here again another B. But, so for the first case, we would then have D is equal to, but now, of course, this back tire could be on top of this bump so that there are no bumps in between the two tires and that would just be equal to D equals B but again of course the front tire could be much farther ahead and there could be many bumps in between so we can have any positive integer multiples of B and we will call that K so we'll have K times B where K is any positive integer. So k is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. And just to show for this, we would have it to be d equals to k being 2 times b. Alright, so that was for the first case. And now let's investigate the second case, which again is where both tires are not bouncing at the same time. Okay, so now let's look at this picture. The next tire to hit a bump would be the back tire because the back tire is already in between two neighboring bumps and therefore is closer to the next bump. All right, now when the back tire is at the top of or reaches the next bump, so here, the front tire then gets to a point which is somewhere between the two neighboring bumps and we will call this point P. Now then after that, the next tire to hit a bump, or the tire to hit the next bump, would then be the front tire because again it is in between two neighboring bumps and is closer to the next bump. Now from the question, it states, Charlotte bounces rhythmically in brackets at equal time intervals. So therefore, the time that it takes for the front tire to get from the top of the bump to that point P that is the same amount of time, the same amount of time that it takes for the front tire to leave from that point P and get to the next bump. So therefore, that point P must be exactly in the middle of the two neighboring bumps. And again, that means when the front tire is at that point P, which is in the middle of the two bumps, the back tire is then on top of a bump. Okay. But now here we have shown in the picture the front tire being on the top of a bump. So actually the front tire is shifted back, so to the left, half a distance of B. And if we were to shift the back tire also to the left, half a distance of B, so instead of the back tire being at the top of a bump, it would then be half a distance of B back, so it would be in the middle of its two neighboring bumps. Okay, so now let's find the formula for this. Now again, even if there were no bumps in between, so let's say this front tire was actually above this bump, 
we would still have d equal to, and we would still have that distance of b over 2 because we have that half distance of b. But again, there can be any number of bumps in between the two tires, so that would be, again, we would have that k being any positive integer value, so we would have k times b, but then we would still have plus that b over 2, that half distance of b. And this is where k can equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, k can equal to 0 because if we have d equals to 0 times b plus b over 2, we would still have that b over 2. And that would represent, when k equals 0, that would represent this front tire being above this bump. Okay, so we have the formulas for case one and case two. And now, from the question, it says, which relation between B and D describes all cases that Charlotte bounces rhythmically? So, therefore, we want to combine the formula for the case one, D equals K times B, and with the formula for case two, D equals K times B plus B over two. Okay, now let's look at the similarities of the two. Well, we both have d equals to k times b. Here we have d equals k times b, but in the second formula, we have plus b over 2. So therefore, wherever we see b in formula 1 and formula 2, we want to then have b over 2. Okay, so for the first formula, we would then have d is equal to, and to get b over 2, we would just multiply k by 2, so we would then get 2k times b over 2. And here, well, to get b over 2, we would then just have 2, multiply the 2, and then we would just have b over 2. So we would have 2k times b over 2. But here, for the second formula, we actually still have plus b over 2. So we have 2k times b over 2 plus 1 times b over 2. So using the distributive law, we would then have d equals to 2k plus 1 times b over 2. Okay, so here we have 2k times b over 2, and here we have 2k plus 1 times b over 2. So now let's think, what do these formulas represent? Well, here we have 2k times b over 2. So this represents all even multiples of b over 2, because whatever k value we have, say being 1, 2, 3, whatever, when you multiply by 2, that number then becomes odd, or even. So then we would have an even multiple of b over 2. Whereas in the second formula, when we have whatever, again, whatever number k is, whatever positive integer, be it, say, it's 1, 2, or 3, whatever it is, if you multiply that by 2, we get an even number. Then adding 1, we would then actually get an odd number. So this then represents all odd multiples of b over 2. All right. So we have one formula representing the even multiples of b over 2 and a formula representing all the odd multiples of b over 2. So now we just want one formula, formula that combines the even multiples and the odd multiples of b over 2. Well, this is easy because then we can just have d is equal to, and we have any number, which we will just call n, and that will be multiplied by b over 2. And that will cover having any odd or even any even or odd multiples of b over 2. And then this is for n being equal to now it can't be equal to 0 obviously. So it would be 1 2 3 and so on. And now let's just prove this. If we have n equals to 1, 
Well, then we have d equals 1 times b over 2. So we have b over 2. And if we look here, well, that would just be like having k equals to 0. Because 2k, that would be 0 plus 1 is 1 times b over 2. Now, if we were to have n equals to 2, well, 2 times b over 2, 2 over 2, they cancel out. So we would just have b. And looking up here, that would be if k was equal to 1. Because that would be 2 times b over 2 is just b. And finally, for n equals 3, well, we would then have 3 times b over 2. And if we look in the second formula, that would be having k equals to 1, because 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3 times the b over 2. Okay, so looking at the options, the correct option is option f, d equals to n times b over 2, where n can e equal to any positive integer. So 1, 2, 3, and so on. If you'd like to know more about this contest, please feel free to visit our website at caributest.com.